Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about Chevy Silverados. This particular one is a 2015 LTZ. Pretty much top of the line for them. That's a sharp looking pickup as you can see. And it's kind of a show truck because as you can see here, it's got the short bed on it. It's not a full size bed. It's more of a show off truck than anything else. Look at the rims. They're not made for going through mud. <laughs> but as you're going to see here, you can already see the quality is kind of cheap. Okay, that's unlocked. That's locked. It's unlocked. But look, I'm pulling it. Nothing happens. You got to jerk around. It's just cheaply made tailgate. I can feel the plastic already coming apart. Five years old and the latch is starting to go. I know it's going to snap off. I've fixed a bunch of these. Come on now, Chevy. This was a $43,000 truck when it was new and it's only five years old. Cheap plastic crap on the handles. It's a truck. Come on. Now when we check under the hood. Got a nice V8 engine, which is 355 horsepower, but of course all that power comes at a price on a big heavy truck. This particular one gets about 15 miles a gallon in town, 1920 on a highway. Now as we check the interior, comfy truck, lots of room, turn the key and yeah it's still got a key which I like. Starts right up, got all the electronic stuff but it doesn't have that many miles on it. It's got 67,201 miles. And that small miles and barely five years old, it's got a big problem. Got the AC on low, but it just got room temperature air coming out of it. It's losing the refrigerant, the customer filled it up and it lasted a few weeks and now it's blowing warm again. I made a whole video on this, you can watch it, but basically what I did was, I emptied it all out with my recycling machine, I filled it back up again, put leak dye in it. Normally you'll see where the leak has come with a dye, but it didn't show anything until I got my sniffing machine out. It smells refrigerant leaks. That's a normal beep. When it beeps fast, means there is refrigerant leak. But as you can see there, it checks for other gases too. I just ate a couple of tacos, and I guess they're all gassy from my mouth because it's beeping from that. But in this case, when I stuck it inside the AC dash, it started beeping, meaning that the evaporator inside the dash is leaking. Now it's bad enough that it's leaking. Due to their horrendous modern designs, this is a 50 hour job tearing the whole dash apart to replace it. It's well over with parts and labor and everything. A $2,000 job on a vehicle that's just barely five years old. It's got 60,000 miles on it. To me, that's uncalled for. That is just poor manufacturing by GM. Like I've been saying, they don't make the greatest stuff anymore. Now it's bad enough that it's leaking, but in the olden days, the GM trucks, they had the evaporator here under the hood. I could change an evaporator out in about an hour. Not 14, 15 hours, one hour. But they decided to move it all inside. So you gotta take the whole dash apart. And like I say, it's a 14, 15 hour labor job. And the cost of labor, the cost of parts, be around 2,000 bucks to fix the stupid leak on something that shouldn't have leaked that fast. Again, here's my 94 Celica, 240,000 miles, old as the hill, still got the original evaporator and still blows freezing cold. GM? Quality, it's not there anymore. Now this baby's got all the creature comforts. It's got heated and cooled electric seats. And when you go in the back, you can see the back seat isn't a joke. It's got a lot of space to sit in. A nice little area to put stuff in. Cheaper quality and design. They didn't even have air conditioning system blown out here like the Toyota Sequoia I showed the other day. You just get in the air from the front. They could have easily put vents in here, but I guess that would have cost them too much, or maybe they couldn't figure out how to do it. More interested in having an armrest that's got cup holders in it. Now you're not going to get stuck with this thing, because you can see here's the front end, and there's the drive shaft on the right side. It's all wheel drive, so you're not going to get stuck. And in the back, it's got a big beefy rear end here. Got to put oversized shocks on it. Got a big old spare tire under here. You know, it's a solid built truck. No arguing that. And as I say, when you climb inside, bloody comfy. It's a nice comfy big truck. Traction control on or off, and you can adjust the pedals and stuff. You know, it's got a lot of creature comforts. So there's no arguing that. So let's start it up, take it for a spin. Got the obligatory backup camera. Now it's got decent cornering for a big old pickup truck. We're not gonna have to wait for this guy who rudely pulled out in front of us. Isn't that typical these days? It's got some pickup. Big old engine. 
Hey, it rides like a typical pickup truck, you know. You're gonna feel bumps. They're sloshed out by the weight and everything. But you see, when we hit these bumps, it rumbles around. It's a pickup truck. It's not a Lexus or a Cadillac, you know. It's a pickup truck. But for a pickup truck, really? It's got a pretty smooth ride. Comfy enough when you're going straight and not hitting any big bumps. And if you're used to driving land yachts around like I did when I was a young kid, you kind of point and steer, you know? It's not the crispest of steering, but you know, it's a big old truck. That's what it's gonna act like. And like I said, it's got a pretty cavernous back seat, you know? Climb inside. It's not particularly cramped. This isn't a tiny little back seat. It's got plenty of room. But I do have to say, for almost $50,000 five years ago, and this thing already needs $2,000 plus of air conditioning work on it, the quality just isn't there. As the old saying goes, chrome doesn't get you home. And really, chrome veneer is very thin. It's what lies under that veneer that's important. So when you consider what's under this veneer, I'm not very impressed with this. Hey, they could have done a heck of a better job for all that money. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Enrique Garcia says, how reliable are the Toyota Yaris's? They're not bad vehicles. I have customers with them with 150,000 miles or more. They're kind of little tinny washing machine cars. You go down the road, you're going to feel every bump because they're little. They got a small wheelbase. They're a basic car. Their interiors are kind of ugly and not all that comfortable. But if you want a car to get from here to there, and especially if you're buying a used one cheap, they can still go for years. You know, they can be a decent around car me I mean if I was going to get a car I'd much rather get a Toyota Corolla four-door than the Yaris because it rides so much better it's a nicer looking car too but if you want a real cheap car to get around in they're not bad Hotsky 83 says Scotty what's your take on a Toyota Venza all right they were great cars but it was a marketing failure by Toyota they had either six or four cylinder engine most had six and they were an SUV now they were in between the matrix and like a Lexus RX they were in between and they're in between the price and and it just never really fit. Like the Matrix that cost a lot less, people that really wanted luxury went out and got the Lexus, the same company as Toyota, and so the Venzas, they never really took off. They were actually priced to quite a bit too high for what you got because you didn't get enough for the high price. The lower priced ones, hey, you got pretty much the same thing other than you didn't get a V6 engine and a Matrix, but they're plenty fast enough with the four. It was a marketing failure, but as a manufacturing car, it wasn't a failure. They're, they're good cars. They any particular problems they were just in the wrong price range for what you got and then they stopped making them chat slice says scotty which one should i buy a toyota 86 versus scion frs versus subaru or brz well they're all made by subaru <laughs> so my advice is buy the one that costs the least if you want one because they're all made in a subaru factory toyota doesn't make them they're all made in a subaru factory so what the heck buy the whatever the cheapest priced one you can find because they're all basically the same vehicle made by subaru in a subaru factory and then just rebadge this toyota or Scion. So wherever you get the best price, go ahead and get them. They're good vehicles. You know, they're not Toyotas. They're boxer engines. They're not Toyota engines. They're Subaru boxer engines. If you want a boxer engine, go ahead. But if you don't like them, don't buy it because they're all boxer engines and they can have problems as they age. Salad dressing says, what's the cheapest and more reliable car for a new driver? Okay, cheap and reliable. Hmm. <laughs> of course, you look at like a Toyota Corolla or an old Toyota Camry. They can run forever, even with high mileage. I've had people buy them with 150,000, and they're still driving them with 250,000. You don't want to pay much for a car that's got a lot of mileage, but they're such reliable cars. And since they made millions and millions, I think they sold over 30 million Corollas. Parts are available. They get wrecked. They're in a junkyard, so you can get used parts cheap if you wreck yours and you want to bolt some parts on for what you wrecked. So really, Toyota. A Corolla would probably be the best you can find one. And if it's old, as long as it still runs good, it could be a good vehicle. 72 Nova says, do you think the insane incentives being offered by the manufacturer will boost sales of their overpriced vehicles? <laughs> a little bit but hey as far as I'm concerned the great recession is already here and it's probably going to last for quite some time not just the virus but everything else a bloated stock market the rich taking everything and the people in the middle class as usual getting screwed over like they always do and all the deals have to pay for everything I think they're gonna have a real hard time selling these expensive vehicles you know they keep making the bigger and bigger SUVs I saw one the other day got paid eighty thousand dollars for an American-made SUV and I'm like that's insanity well I guess if 
few months from now, I don't think they're going to be selling that many of these 80,000 SUVs anymore. So you can give all these incentives you want, no interest, blah, blah, blah. But I don't care. I'd rather pay cash for a car that's five grand used and get no interest on an $80,000 car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.